What? April says hi. She's the baby. Hi, Autumn! <laughs> hi, my name is Apriana, also known as Black Girl Writing, and on this channel, we are on the journey to becoming published. So, a lot has happened since my last video, and by a lot, I mean like, I had my birthday, so I turned 26, and I officially got my ass kicked off of my mother's insurance, and I had like the slightest, slightest panic attack. The biggest news, I got engaged. I am currently now wedding planning, which has been a lot. Um, I'm now working two jobs. So um, I'm working on my debut novel that I'm calling A Seat of the Soul, which is a young adult fantasy inspired by the Mali Empire. I have three main characters. So I have started my chapter, well, the first chapter, and then I realized something. My writing sucks. So <laughs> I came to this conclusion when I was rereading the chapter. I had about 3,000 words. And when I was initially writing it, when I filmed that video, I was really loving it. So I took three days to just take a break from it and to revisit it. And then when I reread it, I was like, this shit is trash. I was like, ew. And so I got, you know, I ain't gonna lie, I got a little discouraged because for me, I always tend to think that everybody just has it right the first time that they don't struggle, which I know isn't true. So I have decided that I'm gonna take Michael Laron's advice. Michael Laron, he has a podcast on, on Apple Podcasts and also on YouTube, he is a writer. He has a different pen name from his actual like professional name. So he writes a lot of different books. I haven't checked out his books, but I love his podcast. And one of his podcasts was um, explaining how, you know, writing a book is hard. And it's harder going through the drafts and all that stuff, but he suggested writing it out the best of your ability. And by doing that, taking, um, what should I say? Taking um, notes and pointers from people who have done it before from books that you've already liked. So I was like, okay, cool. I have a few books that are on my messed up library um, that I really enjoyed reading because it felt like the characters popped, the world was believable, and the story just sucked me in. So I decided that I was gonna use um, chapter one examples for two books. One is currently at my apartment, which is Ray Bearer by Jordan E. Fuego. And then the second book that I will be using later on to just help me rewrite my chapters um, will be um, A Song of Race, Wraiths and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown. And I found what I really enjoyed reading this book was that the chapter, it was easy to read. It was, it was immersive, but it wasn't too immersive or it was overwhelming. And I don't know if this sounds weird, but the wordplay I feel like she used was kind of it was simple and basic, but it got the point across because I found out for me when it comes to describing things and like writing out the world and writing out what people think, I, I don't know how to do that. Like I'm the type of person, like I could come up with a kick-ass idea and I'm like, okay, let's go for it. But I don't know how to take the next steps to just put it on the page. And what I do put on the page, I think is trash. And then I end up just being like, screw it all. And then I just end up deleting everything. And I'm like, okay, we'll just try again next time. I promise, going to try. I was gonna say, I was gonna promise. I'm going to try to not do it again, especially since Camp NaNoWriMo is next month in July. In July, I'm also doing wedding planning, but you know, Rome was built in a day. So just little baby steps. Um, so I'm just gonna go over the things that I personally liked from the first chapter that I read about Ray Bearer and then things that I've noticed from my writing. Just go over the covers a little bit. Just, <sighs> oh, that black girl magic, baby. Also, I discovered Instacart, which isn't a new thing, but I decided, you know what? I'm gonna do Instacart so I can be productive and still multitask because my boyfriend's like, well, not my fiance. He's like, Man, don't get Instacart, that's lazy. You can just go to the grocery store. store. I could, but you know what I did while I was ordering on the Instacart? I talked to the wedding venue people. I took a shower. I did my hair. I somewhat, I vacuumed my apartment floor and I'm eventually gonna go to sleep. And I also filmed this video. Smarter, not harder. So yeah, Instacart. Notes for the first chapter right here. And it wasn't that much, just a little bit. So the first thing that I noticed was that every sentence felt like um, a mini scene and they mainly felt like flashbacks. 
and I'm also the type of person I like to consider myself creative but when it comes to creating my own things I can't hear the voice I can't like see the characters in the scene I kind of have to be encouraged or sparked by something so when I was reading you know the first chapter I felt like it was just really easy for me to be immersed immersed into the world and then um the information that was given about Tara Sai, you know just a little the little uh, nitpicks like nobody could touch her you know the tutors were locking me away in my room like I never saw my mother I was like oh sis is having a really hard time but that made me like draw into her character um another thing that I really liked was learning right away the mother father and Tara size Tari size relationship and how complicated that was usually books I've read that's kind of like mm, fifth sixth chapter like tenth chapter tenth chapter I need to get some sleep. 10th chapter type of thing. Because some of the books that I, I've read, like I really wanted to enjoy this book um, called Daughters of Henry. I'm going to finish it, but it just, it kind of seemed to drag off or drag on. Like I know what the book's about from the synopsis, but getting there, I'm like, I'm kind of going in and out of it. So I haven't finished that book. Um, but what I really like with Jordan E. Franco, Jordan E. Fuego's book, it kind of, it sets you there and it keeps going. It's not at a super fast pace, but we automatically know that um she's an Eru, I think. She's an, e an Eru. Her father and her mother are in a very treacherous relationship that the lady made him be a part of just so she can, you know, exact her vengeance. So it kind of makes it seem like she really doesn't love Tara, so she only has one purpose, you know? And um, that was really interesting, just finding that out at the end. And when Tara Sai finds out that meaning, I mean, she's only seven years old, but it's, it's nice to read as an older reader. It's like, okay, this is going to be complicated because we know it's a kind of like a coming of age young adult. So she's obviously going to become a teenager. So, you know, how is she going to handle that stuff? Because she loves her mother. Like she's in a sense obsessed with her mother. When she was five years old, she started sleepwalking, trying to find her and they had to like carry her back. So it was like... It was just like, ugh, it was heartfelt. And then the last thing that really like, you know, got my attention, because it was only uh, 10, 10 pages for this chapter. So it was really quick. It was a quick read. It was easy to digest and it kept me wanting more. So that was the real, the my main thing. Um, but another thing was, I kind of said it before, she has simple description and detail and imagery. But, and like I said, it was simplified and somewhat basic but i loved it because it made it make sense and i feel like for me i definitely try to over oversimplify because for i think i'm trying to either make up for something i'm definitely lacking because when i read other people's work i'm like it just seems to flow off of the page and like their writing is just poetry and it's like how and i know a way to work on that is to do worksheets which you know i'm not gonna I don't like doing worksheets. Like I just enjoy being in the world and writing, but when I'm not in it, it's extremely hard. I try to implement on my own. I know automatically from the three the three thousand words chapter that I did have, it was very monotonous. I was over explaining. Um, and I know the first chapter doesn't have to be perfect, but it at least has to be enjoyable to be read, right? Like when I reread that back, I was like, I don't even want to finish this. I'm like five pages in. I'm like. No, and I feel like writing something I want to read, it has to be kind of a draw in. And I was still trying to figure out how to have that draw in because I'm still at a point where I'm thinking if I'm going to cut one of my main characters, I have three, two sisters and another male character. And I was like, well, if I cut a sister, it would, it would make it make sense because the broad scope of my story, I believe is interesting, but the the main thing is it about a is it about a dead king and her daughter trying to find what happened to their father, or is it about them trying to you know make a name for themselves in a patriarchal society? Is it about the people who are being you know experimented on for their um their um abilities? Like it's it's very mixed and jumbled, and I found rereading the books that I like, it's very concise. And it just makes sense. And I know they didn't get there overnight. Obviously, they have hundreds of, you know, re redos and everything. But I think taking Michael, Lar Michael Laron's um, suggestion for just trying to make it your best first draft to, like, 
it won't be perfect, but at least, you know, as buttery as it can possibly be and using examples that you already like and that you already can find yourself wanting to implement in your book. I was like, that's, that's a good suggestion. I'm, I'm going to use I hope that. you guys enjoyed it. I want to keep it nice, short, and sweet. I'm trying to get back into the groove of writing. Writing. Well, also writing, but filming videos. Usually I film Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then I will post, you know, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll film and then I'll post on the days. But since I went out of town, I got engaged and all this extra, all, all, and the whole world was just bleh. And um, I didn't get to film and I felt really bad because my subscriber count has been growing. I think I have seven subscribers now. So hi to my new subscribers. And um, yeah, so I'm going to end this video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. The next video that I will be talking about will be discovering my character voice because as a creative, uncreative person, as crazy as that sounds, I can't hear my character's voice. I get, I get, you know, encouraged and inspiration from other characters who I have read because I'm the type of person who I can't read a book without an audiobook because I, I, it's weird. I'm, I'm not that imaginative. I'm, not, I feel like I don't want to say I'm not creative, but I'm not. My imagination is very boom. I like imagination, but I like the facts. So it's kind of iffy when I start to read something that doesn't have an audiobook and I'm like, uh, I can't hear their voice. I can't hear the highs and lows. It's just, uh. and with Ray, Ray Bear, it was the highs and lows voice. I think Vince, uh, I don't, I'm, forget the women, the woman who voiced Tari Sai in this book, but she was phenomenal. So I literally like devoured this book within like three or four days, honestly, of getting it. So yeah. Okay, I'm officially going to end this video. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Bye, you guys.